Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me on time for our session. Lovely to see the participant window uh, expanding here. We got nine folks so far. We had a whopping 70 plus who registered for this afternoon's event. So um, let's see here. We're right at 3.30. Typically, I'll give about a minute or so before we start off because once again, tend to have a good number of people that RSVP. We want to make sure that everyone that wants to be in attendance uh, does arrive and hears everything that we have to say. You're probably also noticing once you've logged into the Zoom uh, session that it is being recorded. So as a reminder, anything that's going to be said in today's session, you will get a link of this video recording along with a couple of other resources that are going to be discussed. So Let's see so far, 11 folks here today. Good to see some uh, familiar names, folks that uh, have attended a lot of our sessions in the past. So I'll give it a couple more seconds or so before I dive into the meat of our discussion. So. Okay, so I'm not necessarily seeing the attendees numbers rising that much at this point, so maybe it's a good time to get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, my name is Luis Santiago. My pronouns are he and him, and I have the pleasure to serve as the Associate Director of Coaching Operations here at UW Seattle's Career and Internship Center. And as many of you probably already know, uh, we tend to try to do at least one, maybe even two sessions throughout the quarter where we are able to engage with you all as faculty, staff, advisors to familiarize yourselves with either new initiatives or uh, maybe existing resources that we already have. All of them always going to be, or all these discussions typically around a particular theme. So today's theme was along the lines of helping students build their professional connections. As some of you probably already know, winter quarter is a very popular time for students to start connecting with uh, possible employers, uh, places to try to find things for either jobs if they're getting ready to graduate at the end of this academic year, or maybe they're looking for summer internships. So in our world in career services, connecting students with employers, connecting students with alumni, basically the whole buzzword of networking really kicks in winter quarter. So our hope for today's session was to once again, get everyone here familiar with some of the things that we have going on in our office with regard to this area of networking. So <laughs> there's a lot of things here once again, uh, Anything that's going to be discussed today, you'll get a copy of this Zoom recording, and I'll also send in the email after the session any of the websites, links that we're going to share along the way. This is a webinar, so I don't necessarily see your faces. Obviously, you don't have to turn on a camera, but if you do have questions at any point, I invite you to use the Q&A feature of Zoom. You can also put things in the chat. I have both things open, but Q&A helps, helps me a little bit more to keep everything tracked up. You also have the option to raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask your question that way. So we'll try to engage with each other as best as possible. All that being said, let me share my screen because a lot of what we do here is showcase all the fun things that we want to make you familiar with, with the topic at hand. So I'll share my screen. I'll also turn off my video. That way you can probably focus more so on the resources that we have on our website. So once again, the topic is really networking. You know, How can we help students build their professional connections? So um, if you weren't already aware, on our website, uh, a lot of the resources that we have for students and where they are in what particular stage of career development that they're in. A lot of those types of resources live in this career planning bucket. 
And as you can see, building relationships or networking is one of the areas where we have a wonderful landing page with lots and lots of helpful tools that you can probably point your students to. Many of these pages under the career planning buckets are divided within these particular sections. We either have recorded webinars, short videos, uh, upcoming event featured resources, which you can see if you scroll through um, these things called classes. A lot of these are LinkedIn learning videos that are specific to networking. So we've linked to them on our page. We do have a networking workshop series that we do at least twice, maybe even three times a quarter that students can attend. But we also have a recording of those webinars on our website. Uh, they're easy to navigate. Uh, I don't know if you've seen with YouTube videos, you can now put quote unquote chapters on those videos. So even though the webinars might be 15, 20 minutes long, if there's a specific section that you want to hone in on, we have these chapters or sections on all of our webinars. So they're easily digestible. Other quick short videos of people giving ideas or, or tips with networking and a lot of other uh, featured resources, which we as coaches go over with students uh, anytime they bring up that buzzword networking or they're looking to build their professional connections. You'll notice with the featured resources section, we start seeing a couple of tools that we find uh, very important for students to become familiar with early on. Uh, obviously, many of us should potentially know that LinkedIn is a very important networking tool, and LinkedIn has a huge UW alumni database. So that's absolutely something that we always bring up to students. Um, and I'm going to probably not dive too deep in terms of how we utilize that tool, because I'm assuming the audience right now has a strong understanding of LinkedIn. What I did want to show, though, because with regards to online platforms that students can use for networking purposes, there's a lot more out there other than just LinkedIn. And once again, LinkedIn is amazing, especially because there's a large UW alumni population there. But I did also want to call out some other tools like Handshake. So with Handshake, some of you may know that Handshake is well known for uh, where to look for jobs and internships. And yes, that is probably the number one reason to use Handshake. You can also see different events that are popping up, which we do have a workshop, or excuse me, a, a career fair coming up later this quarter. So all that information can be found in Handshake. One less known feature that Handshake has is a networking tool. So how this is, I guess, I don't want to say hidden, but where this is embedded within Handshake, when students are looking up jobs or maybe even using the employer database in Handshake, they can go to a employer's page. So for example, I'll just go ahead and click one of these top ones here, University of Washington Libraries as an employer page in Handshake. So when I open an employer page, it'll obviously give me a lot of information about that particular employer, but there's this wonderful section here titled students who've worked here. So they can see, because remember, or maybe you don't know, but students in Handshake can create their own student profile. By creating that profile, they're listing what experiences that they've had, where have they worked, where have they had uh, internships, things of that nature. It's, it's basically like LinkedIn. I'd like to tell students, think of Handshake as LinkedIn Junior or LinkedIn Lite which is great for first or second year students that might be a little bit too nervous to start a LinkedIn profile. They start with Handshake first, build your profile. And if you have stated that you've worked in a particular location and that company has an employer page in Handshake, you'll automatically get uh, populated on that employer's page. In order to take this to the next stage of networking though, you can then click see all 
And this takes you to the student database in the Handshake system. You see filters on the left-hand side where students, uh, maybe they want to talk to University of Washington students, maybe they want to talk to alumni, maybe they want to talk with people that have a, you know, they're studying political science and they want to look up students that have also pursued that degree. There's different types of filters in play that students can use to then reach out to certain individuals and using the messaging feature that's listed there. So not a very well-known tool, but our career coaches love to showcase this to students. Once again, some students might get a little bit nervous to start things off in LinkedIn. Maybe they don't feel they're uh, that far off with their own experiences as of yet. So it's a great place to start. And then when students get comfortable with building a profile on Handshake, maybe using the networking features in Handshake, transitioning then to something like LinkedIn, where there's probably a, a little bit more of a professional uh, feel to it, not completely filled just with students or recent alums, but more so people that are in the career field of their choosing, um, they might feel a little bit more comfortable navigating that site because they've gotten familiar with what that's like on a tool like Handshake. So from a platform standpoint, LinkedIn is a big thing that we tell students about. Handshake obviously is another one. The third one that we typically talk about with students is gonna be um, Husky Landing. So if you aren't aware, Husky Landing is something that is powered or, or really uh, offered by the University of Washington's Alumni Association. Uh, they're using a platform called People Grow. And this is a great place for our current students to find mentors in different areas. So these people that are on the Husky Landing network, um, they chose to be in that network as a mentor because they want to actively assist students that seek them out. Not saying that people on other platforms aren't trying to do that, but the uh, the Husky Landing platform is more of a mentoring type of tool. So there's really three great places that our students can utilize as far as online platforms are concerned to try to build their professional connections. Handshake, LinkedIn, and the Husky Landing page. And we do talk about how to utilize all three of those tools in our How to Build a Network workshop and webinar, which you, once again, have a recording of it there, and we do have it offered on a at least two, three times a quarter, which I believe if I scroll to the bottom, yep, we see upcoming events. <laughs> We're doing the next one just in a couple of weeks, February 6th. So that is one part that we want to make sure that you're familiar with the different platforms that we try to promote to students if they're trying to build their professional connections. Um, it's not just platforms, though. It's not just things that students should hopefully be connecting with in their free time on their own. We also try to put on a number of events where students can actually engage with people that are either coming to campus or looking to engage with students in a virtual setting. So I wanna shift over now and talk a little bit about those types of events, which a lot of them will be find, found in a section of our website. So if you see our services and you scroll down, there's gonna be a section here called connect with alumni and mentors. When you get to that page, you'll see a number of different things that we try to promote and try to get students to be aware of in terms of networking. One of the biggest things that we do in partnership with the Alumni Association is our alumni panel series. So if I just click the learn more button, you'll notice that we have two panels this winter quarter. We just had the first one, just a couple, God, yeah, was that last week? Maybe two weeks ago, January 17th, careers in UX and UI. And then later on in February, February 21st, 
will have one careers in health sciences. We have somebody on staff that they put on at least two of these programs every quarter. Maybe not so much in the summer because summer we might not have that much traffic with students here on campus, but fall, winter, and spring, there will always be at least two of these types of panels, which once again, it's alumni that we try to connect with that are in these fields. We try to get a good, strong representation from different areas. Typically about three or four alumni uh, might attend these types of opportunities. And it's a great place for students to be able to learn more about some of the things that could be listed here on this webpage or what might be brought up in the unique situation of whatever the topic or, or career uh, focus is for that panel. So it's a great program that we've been doing for a, a good time now and a great partnership that we have with the Alumni Association. So uh, we love doing this. If that's something that you think your students would benefit from, please, please, please push this out to them. That way they can see all the different things that are coming up. But even if you have questions about it, I'll make sure to send the contact information or maybe you have suggestions. Maybe you have different career fields that you'd like to potentially see. Um, we can go ahead and try to get that going as long as we hear from you all on that topic. So our alumni panels are a big thing that we do. Um, some of the other wonderful things that we actually just started doing, and I will pause here. Actually, let me let me save the exciting things uh, at the end. Uh, we have some new things hot off the press that we don't necessarily have visuals for. So let me first stick with the things that we do have visuals. So our alumni panels are some big things that we do. Um, a new thing that just uh, became something uh, that is started. So this Husky Lunch Network. Uh, we created this blog post just earlier in the quarter just to let people know that during the month of February, there will be an opportunity for individuals to connect with people in different areas and <laughs> get some free grub while they're here. Once again, this is another program that is really hosted by the Alumni Association, but it all is a big part of this whole theme of helping students build professional connections. So what a great opportunity for students not only to get free food, which I think a lot of students love to you know jump on that, right? But also while they're doing that, connect with different individuals or companies or alumni in settings that would be of benefit to the student. So great opportunity, hot off the press, but we do have a visual for that. So that would be good for you all to be aware of as well. Other things that we have in terms of connecting students with alumni. So you'll see industry mentorship program and Huskies at work. The industry mentorship program is another thing that, once again, we have one staff member, so their main priority is to try to get students connected with these different alumni. They also teach this course that connects students with mentors in different industries for that quarter. So students will sign up for a course, or they'll sign up for, yeah, the, the, a Gen Studies course, course, and in those 10 weeks, they get paired up with a mentor in the field of what each quarter is gonna fall into. So right now, winter quarter, we have the course focusing in on health and life sciences. Notice that applications are open right now for the spring corner quarter, which is gonna focus in on nonprofit and government. Um, and yeah, <laughs> application is, deadline's coming up pretty soon. It's a really fun program, but we probably have around 30 so students that really get uh, signed up for this on a quarterly basis. And each student really gets beneficial information from being partnered up with different mentors. So it's a great opportunity once again in kind of a structured way for 10 weeks for that student to be uh, honed in with a particular person. And obviously after the class is over, 
if they still want to connect with that mentor, if the relationship has been built, then absolutely they'll be able to push forward with that. So great thing to do. And also it helps take that hard part out of finding somebody. Cause I think when it comes to networking, that might be the hardest thing for the student to try to connect with someone that actually wants to engage. What a great opportunity because all the mentors in this program, they, they want to be a part of this. So it's a win-win for all parties. So let's see here. We've talked about a few platforms that we try to get students familiar with. We've talked about a couple of programs that we have, like the industry mentorship program, our alumni panels. Uh, Husky is at work, if you weren't already aware, but there's information on this. Uh, another program that is offered through the Alumni Association, uh, and it's more so a job shadowing program. So yes, they get connected with a mentor, but they can potentially actually go and see what a day in the life is like for that particular field. So more information on that site, but I'll move forward with some of the other things that I have on my agenda since we only have a couple more minutes left to hang out, uh, which, yeah, was going to be some of the tips and new things that we have in terms of networking. So going back to the platforms and when you are trying to build your network using tools like LinkedIn or Handshake, a big part of that's gonna require you to create your own profile, right? Part of creating that profile is gonna be having a picture, maybe a headshot. So we are super excited and maybe you already know this, but if not, we over the, was it the summer, early summer, end of the spring quarter, we got a professional headshot um, machine. I don't want to call it a booth. It's actually, let me do it this way. I'll just show the visual of it because uh, of course we were super excited about it. We put a social media post about it, which shout out to the folks in our office that run our Instagram page. Uh, if you're not already following us and you are a frequent user of Instagram, I would strongly recommend for you to follow us. Uh, UW Career Center is our handle. Uh, and it's a great way to kind of see, yeah, see, perfect example. There was a post about the Husky Lunch Network. But if I go a little bit further down, we did have... a post, a reel that we put about our photo booth. So you can see it's kind of a, a, a I don't know, a, 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 a thing that you stand in front of. It has a built-in camera. You're able to use the touch screen. It takes three photos and you can pick which one. There's different ways to edit it, different ways to uh, play around with it. You can take as many pictures as you want or at at the bare minimum, the three that come with it. This has been a very, very popular tool and resource, not only for students, but faculty, staff, advisors. Look, this is open to anybody. If, as long as it's not being used, come on down and get your professional headshot taken. Uh, I do remember a few students in the past uh, <laughs> might be here for 30, 45 minutes taking a bunch of headshots because they're looking for the right one, but there wasn't a wait. So more than welcome to use it. So professional hide chats uh, could be a great thing in terms of building that network, especially if you're building an online profile. And the last thing that I wanted to call up as I bring up my, I guess, professional headshot, um, this is a very, very brand new program or offering that we just started this quarter. Honestly, the very first event was last week and we're calling it uh, our career connections events. So in essence, we do get a number of employers that reach out to us a lot of times and want to do an info session. Uh, sometimes these might be smaller or maybe not well-known employers and we have seen somewhat of a decline of attendance to individual info sessions for individual 
employers. But what we're wanting to do, we still want to try to accommodate these employers who are interested in coming to our campus, meeting our students, and getting their story out there, getting their opportunities out there to students. So we're actually starting certain programs that are more of a, I don't know if you want to call it like a mini career fair or a bigger info session. So we'll try our best to have different themes. So last week we had a theme of uh, government opportunities. We had four, five employers table in our lobby in Mary Gates Hall. And they were, were there for you know, two hours and it was a hit. We had tons and tons of students. Some of them have RSVP'd. So what we have to do, we have to wait until we get uh, a good number of employers to buy in. And then once uh, we do have a collection of employers, we'll post it out. We'll have it on our social media pages, on our website. Uh, even the day of, we'll post flyers all around Mary Gates Hall. Uh, and yeah, we had uh, over 100 students, I think over 150 students come to this first event, which was uh, amazing. Uh, employers loved it because obviously they're getting foot traffic. They're being able to discuss their opportunities to students. And students obviously loved it because they are looking, they're hungry. They know winter is the time to start making these professional connections. So they were very appreciative of the fact that they had that opportunity to do it. In a somewhat more intimate setting, as opposed to like the hub career fair that we have where there's over a hundred employers, <laughs> a lot of students. So we were very excited about that career connection event that we did last week. Uh, the next one's gonna be mid February. And I think it's gonna have more of a focus on writing and communication type of employers. We're still in the process of reaching out and making sure that we can get a good number. We always wanna to try to have at least four but once we have more information and we have uh, solidified who will be coming, just keep an eye out. Uh, we'll obviously post it on our website. We'll post it on our social media pages. And if it's something that you want to engage your students in, feel free to showcase that to them as well. So all that being said, uh, that's really the bulk of what I wanted to cover today. As a reminder, a lot of what we try to do is just to get you familiar with some of the amazing tools and resources that we have on any particular topic, which today was really networking. Um, surprisingly enough, we still have about three minutes left. Uh, I tend to talk a lot, so I'm glad that I was able to keep this time, or keep my talk on time today. So uh, if you did have any questions though, you're more than welcome to once again, maybe put them in the Q&A, maybe in the chat, or if you want to talk out loud and unmute, you can raise your hand. You look for the raise hand feature and then I can unmute you. But uh, if not, thanks for hanging out and I hope you found this helpful. I'll stick around too, just in case if there are any questions.